Hello everybody and welcome to an unboxing of the two player starter set for Fallout Wasteland Warfare by Modifius, I think it's pronounced. Modifius Entertainment. This was originally released back in 2017, however this is a 2018 repackage. I only know that because it says 2018 there and it includes a bonus Zatan alien from Fallout 3. But it's mostly, it's based, it's a miniature game, it's skirmish and is based around Fallout 4 specifically. It's a miniature game, although I think this re-release switched from normal resin to PVC based resin. Uh, you can play it as a, just a normal skirmish game, you make a crew of like survivors, super mutants, brotherhood of steel, raiders, robots, and pit them against each other. There is a single player mode, everything comes with an AI, uh, well it's not really an AI deck, but a way to make them work as an AI. Uh, in a sort of campaign mode and then there's kind of like a long term close to a campaign mode where each individual mission is not necessarily connected but you have a settlement that you build up and that's the one that interested me the most. So uh, I'll get this polythene off, I wanted to leave it on at the start here because that sticker was on there and then we'll take a look at what's in the box. Alright let's get the lid off and take a look. I looked into this game a little bit before buying it as kind of like a Christmas present. To myself it comes with 12 pre-assembled miniatures. That lid is stuck on there tight. It's a very simple heavy game which I think would be the only super duper negative. That makes it very easy to translate into multiple languages but a little bit tedious to constantly be referring to what each symbol means. It's a you know it's a very common thing with skirmish based games. So anyway this is the getting acclimated leaflet. So it's the, the absolute basics. It uses multicolored movement things but they are unlike in crisis protocol they are actual exact lengths so that must be like two six eight ten maybe a, just a, a glance guessing the ranges but everything is kind of like color coded for ease so well unless you're colorblind i guess so for instance like your movement might be red or your optimum distance for your gun might be blue that, that kind of thing and that just goes over the basics of the the specifics of how to use cards and yeah, there, for instance, that's a pistol where its optimal range is blue. How all that works, how your special stats work, skill checks. That's the absolute basics of play which we'll worry about once we're actually playing. Speaking of which, we're probably not going to be playing this anytime soon because I want to finish Resident Evil 2 first, the board game. But, oh, there's actually an errata. When was this published? August 2018. Interesting, interesting. Uh, there's further proof that it's a re-release. Huh. Oh, some updates for like Preston, for Sentry Bots, for Ronnie Shaw. Okay, just a single page, but interesting nevertheless. Uh, what was I saying? But you might see this in other ways prior to actually starting a campaign because I am painting the miniatures for this because I like the look of them. Not that there's anything wrong with like the Resident Evil 2 board game ones, it's just they're a bit basic and they're all the same. So, that is a sheet of... goodness grief. Uh, lots of... lots of different things. Armor buffs being on fire, caps, which is uh, self-explanatory. Well, within the matches, I believe they're used as currency, but they're also used as on a second set because it's meant to be a two-player set. They're also used for like your reputation, point value, etc. So it does also come with a mat. Oh, it's in two pieces. That's a little unfortunate. Is it in two pieces or did I accidentally get given two? Huh. It's played on 3x3, three three, same as like uh, Batman, Marvel, etc. I think that's half. Yeah, that looks like half the table to me. So it's only, pardon me, it's only on, it's only on printed paper, so it's going to be super creased, which is a shame. It would be nice if it was fabric, because all the best play mats are basically mouse mat material. But then we get into the nitty gritty. So next, the thickest book maybe? Yeah, about the same. The Campaign Handbook, Secure Your Place in the Wasteland Society. So I don't know if this is the Persistent Settlement Upgrade. Let's have a little look here. Into the Wasteland, Against the Wasteland, Settling Down, Scenarios and Tutorial Scenarios. Okay, so how to make a, a force, then some standard scenario missions here, and then more importantly, tutorial missions. Although why would you have the tutorial missions after the main scenarios? That's a little confusing. But it has a whole section on the tutorial, it's just a little weirdly placed. So this gets into the real nitty gritty about how you actually play the game. You use event cards, use perk cards, etc, etc. 
a little complicated at first, at least from what I've seen. Like, not as easy to pick up and play as something like Crisis Protocol, to be fair. But, if once you get used to all the various icons, of which there are too many, uh, it becomes a lot easier to understand. At the bottom of the day, uh, at the bottom of the day? At the end of the day, it's just, you have two action characters, they can shoot each other, they can search for stuff. The complication arises in that even if you fail to, for instance, attack a target, you can get a reaction, which lets you still do an additional thing if you failed, which is kind of nice. Ah, and these are AI scenarios as well, so that's good too. Okay. Not sure if that's specifically... I, I didn't see anything specific about these settlements in there, however. And then finally... Rules of Play, your complete guide to battling in the wasteland by James Sheeran. Or Sheehan. Leaving the vault, searching the wasteland, ready for action, the tools of war, advanced units and models, luck and critical attacks. Okay, so... I'm not sure why they split this into a different book from the camp. Well, I guess the campaign one might have different rules to just playing a skirmish where you put two crews together and chuck them at each other. But that's how you do it. It's harder to shoot into hand-to-hand -hand combat in this one. You have a chance of hitting your own team. And then the most important part, a bunch of bags to use for the counters, actually, which is actually a nice touch. Here is all the dice you use, and like I said, it uses a lot of dice with a lot of unique symbols. It's a little confusing at first. But, it's okay. So then the models. The biggest one in the set of the 12 you get, well 13 I guess, including the bonus alien. In green PVC, that's, that is not resin, that is plastic, surely. That, that feels like plastic to me. I'm certain that's PVC plastic, but whatever. A death claw. A nice looking miniature, model, whatever. Good for painting. We then have the bonus Zatan alien, which... Here we go. See, even that, despite being small, pretty detailed. You have two Super Mutant Doggles. Are they just called Super Mutant Dogs? I don't remember their official name. So there's two of those. And then you have three Super Mutants, one of which I can see has a bent sledgehammer. What is this, Steamforge Games? So that one's got a pipe rifle by the looks of things. This one's got two pipe pistols. It's actually quite a fun pose. Very imposing, although he's aiming up and he's overly tall. So yeah, the sledgehammer, it's gone a little wonky. Well, actually, his whole hand there, oh, look at that. That's why it looks wonky. It's pre-assembled, but this hand is loose. It's, it snaps slightly. That's unfortunate. I mean, it's still it's holding in place thanks to this hand being sturdy, but yeah, you can tell that's a little loose. That's, that's a shame. For the other side of the box, you get dog meat. Just normal dog meat, as he comes. The best doggo. Then you also get the Soul Survivor. Nora is her canonical name. If you want the male version, you have to buy him separately. But he essentially has the same gear, the rifle and the pistol. Different perks, though, I think. You've got a set of power armor. I think it's meant to be a Brotherhood of Steel specific one, and he joins you if you play through the campaign. Again, nice looking. And then just three miscellaneous survivors, they're not any of the specific, pardon me, any of the specific settlers like Preston or Mama Murphy, etc. And then finally, what's he got? Shotgun, by the looks. Also is missing a top. He looks like a raider. And actually I think one of them switches sides based on the scenario because sometimes he's an enslaved super mutant techie and sometimes he's the survivors. So that leaves all the labels, which we'll have to remove the packaging off of. So on top of this pack of cards, we've got the bonus one thrown in, the alien, but then it's all the stack cards for the actual miniatures that you didn't get added into the two-player starter set. So Soul Survivor, the day one version, if you're doing the campaign mode, she starts weaker and then gets stronger when she's got some experience. She's got the dog handler perk, which makes dog meat better. Then we've got the settlers, ah oh, yeah, and slave tech. That's why he's not wearing much. Dog meat, Mutant Hounds, that's what they're called. Super Mutants. It's a little odd that they've gone for like showing them unpainted, because it's unpainted and also the wrong colour for the Super Mutants on the card. It'd look nicer if they showed off painted ones. And the Death Claw himself. Nasty. Aspirant Goddard. So he has Brotherhood of Steel. So these are AI cards. I'm not 100% sure how they work, but basically you roll, you match up, and that dictates how the AI reacts, and then the priority is down at the bottom there. So Mutant Hound always goes for the nearest. This super mutant, the one with the rifle, 
always goes for wounded targets first, then weakest, and then finally nearest. So it's quite an interesting way of creating an AI. It isn't just a will attack the closest, they do something different, and then there's also pr uh, priority within that as well. So that's all the AI cards. For including the, the quote-unquote good guys as well. And the alien. I think these are just reference cards showing what each thing uses. Oh, faction cards. Faction card for the survivors. Faction card for the super mutants. AI responses. Move and fall back. Objectives and defend. So those are quick reference for what to do in AI situations. The other pack of cards, which is huge. Look at that is a bunch of stuff. This is all the gear that you use, like hunting rifles, pistols, dog bites, sledgehammers, deathclaw swipe, so it starts with all the attacks, then it goes to items, nuka cola, stuffed monkey, don't remind me, stash of money, lighters, armor, three-piece suit, stim packs, so after all the items you get stat improving drugs, jet cycle, buff out mentats, etc. Ooh, power armor. Because I think the Soul Survivor can get that too. And then perks, I think. What are these classes? Boosts. Boosts to stats. Not quite perks. Perks are different. And these are... Stranger cards. So I guess these are like randomised events. Wounded Farmer. Rig to blow. Containment leak. A creature. Okay, yeah. These are perks. Gun Nuts. Armor. Local Leader. Nerd Rage. Brawler. And then these are events so lightning storm downpour where's the radiation there's always a radiation one may have already went past it what's that dog meat or these explore cards so you're looking for stuff and then finally these are our bounties maybe like in mission quests and then another gun not sure why that's at the back picking up the trail the Thief's Trail Part 26. Oh, maybe these are like how you create a mission, I'm not sure. And then heroic cards. So a lot that isn't understandable without first reading through all the rules. However, the miniatures are nice quality besides the one that's a little broken, unfortunately. It's just the way it goes. As I say, you'll eventually see a solo playthrough of the campaign mode. I guess maybe if I want to do the settlement one, I might have to get in a, an additional booklet. We'll see. But at the very least, in the meantime, you might see some painting videos. For instance, I want to paint up the Death Claw. But I want to paint up all of them, but you might see videos of doing some of them. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little look at the unboxing of Fallout Wasteland Warfare. You'll see it again in the future. Stop for now.